What is going on, Internet? My name is Lou, and I make Linux videos. So tonight we're going to take an overview look at GNOME 3.14. So for those of you who have watched my last video, you know that uh, I answered the questions, uh, what Linux distribution am I running right now and why? And uh, spoiler alert, if you haven't watched that video, uh, I'm running Ubuntu 14.10, the GNOME edition. And out of the box, that particular edition comes with uh, GNOME 3.12. I've actually since upgraded to GNOME 3.14. So if we come to our terminal here, uh, we see that I'm running GNOME Shell 3.14.3. So we're going to head over to the GNOME website. And we're going to take a look here. So... GNOME 3.14 is the latest GNOME release, and it's the result of six months uh, in work by GNOME Project. It includes new features, large amount of smaller improvements and enhancements. This release, uh, release contains 28,859 changes, uh, approximately 871 contributors. Now, one thing that you're going to notice in GNOME Shell releases, not a lot is... Um, visible changes. A lot of the stuff that's changed is under the hood. And we're going to get into a lot of that. For instance, we're using GTK3 now in GNOME 3.14. So a lot of these improvements are under the hood. You're not going to visibly see a whole lot of changes. So, you know, for example, you know, you go into the overview, you still see, you know, your dock here, your workspaces over here to the right. A lot of this stuff has not changed. Um, some things have gone through minor uh, changes, such as these menus. And such, but for the most part, a lot of this stuff is going to look exactly the same. So if you're running GNOME 3.12, visually you're not going to see many changes between GNOME 3.12 to 3.14. You're going to see some updated apps. You're going to see that it's using GTK3. You're going to see some new animations. But as far as you know, what the eye can see, that's pretty much going to be it. So no huge surprises in terms of uh, features that you can see and interact with. Uh, in the desktop a lot of it's going to be under the hood and as you guys know I'm okay with that I'm not a guy that needs to be wowed by a new feature every time um, a desktop environment receives an update for me stability and speed enhancements are always welcomed uh, oftentimes more so than useless features um, so we'll get right into it we see here that the weather app has been redesigned so let's go ahead and open up weather here's the weather app uh, GNOME's weather app has been redesigned for 3.14. The new uh, version makes use of GNOME's new geolocation framework and can automatically show the weather for your current location. And there's a new layout and it provides an effective way to read weather forecasts. That's pretty much it. So this is GNOME weather. All right. So let's uh, move on here. Uh, captive portal handling. GNOME 3.14 comes with improved support for Wi-Fi hotspots. When connecting to Wi-Fi portal, it requires authentication. GNOME will automatically show the login page as part of the connection process. Uh, so Photos is another application that received an update. So uh, I'm a huge fan of the new style of apps. I think they look modern. I think uh, they look like something a desktop operating system of today would use. So in terms of the style design, whoever came up with this, uh, hats off to you because I think it's it's finally something that looks like it should be used today. I think oftentimes the critics will say that you know Linux use looks like something that was used 30 and 40 years ago, and largely they they're right. Uh, a lot of these desktops do kind of look dated, but I think GNOME's doing a great job about bringing um, its desktop into uh, the current you know operating system world of the day. So great job to the design team here. So this is kind of just the layout now. And of course, you can link photos now to online accounts. Photos now gain access to major new online sources. Um, it talks about Picasa, Google+, Android services, so on and so forth. So that's photos. Multi-touch gestures can now uh, be used on touchscreens for system navigation as well as applications. One of the other cool uh, multi-touch feature, which... I expect to be using GNOME Shell now moving on into the future. So I'm actually probably looking into getting um, Apple's Magic Trackpad uh, because you can actually do a lot of gesture-based um, commands using that trackpad with GNOME Shell. So I'm probably going to be picking one of those up uh, and 
um, enabled to do that by uh, GNOME 3.14 and some of the new uh, enhancements they've made there. We have uh, the network-based sharing, so personal file sharing or web dev, media sharing, DLNA, and screen sharing, VNC, is uh, will now remember, let's take a slide over here, uh, which network you want them to be active on, and settings provides the ability to control which networks to share on. This uh, provides an impact privacy function and <laughs> important privacy function and prevents sharing content and services in public places such as your local internet cafe. Modern events, uh, which 314 includes a redesigned events. The new version of the document viewer includes a header bar to give more space to your documents. Let's take a look at that. So here is the new document viewer. Uh, when it's launched without a document being specified, Evans will also show a useful overview to your recent documents. I've not used this yet, so it's not going to show that. And it says, and that's not all. Here's some other features for GNOME 314. Uh, a more featureful boxes. So uh, I don't actually use boxes for my virtualization. I've never actually tried it, so I maybe actually be doing a video uh, on that. I usually use VirtualBox. So 314 is a big release for boxes, the GNOME application for virtual and remote machines. It introduces snapshots, which is actually a pretty cool feature. It allows you to save a virtual machine at a point in time and return it uh, to later. This is useful for returning to a known uh, working state. Some other enhancements here. Automatic downloading, uh, just give boxes the address to install an image and I'll download and install it for you. That's pretty awesome actually. Multiple boxes can now be run in their own separate windows. Awesome feature. Express installation for Debian. Wow. You know what? This is actually really exciting. I think I'm going to uh, do a video on boxes. A lot of this seems really, really cool. So we've got new animations. I'll show you guys what that looks like. So as you can see, going in and out of the application drawer. Those are some of the new animations. New animations have been added to activate overview for this release, creating a smoother and more engaging experience. I would agree. I really like the animations there. Window animations have also been improved for this release with new transitions when opening and closing and minimizing uh, windows. So when we minimize, let's open up and then let's close. Um, so the animations are spot on. I really like them. I'm actually using a GNOME extension to increase the speed of the animations. I'll actually shut that off so you guys can see what they look like without them being sped up here. So let's shut that off. So as you can see, the animation looks a lot nicer once it's slowed down. All right, let's open up File Browser again. Let's close it. So I, I love the new animations. I think they're great. Software keeps getting better. GNOME's new facility for browsing and installing applications has been making major progress in recent releases, and 3.14 is no exception. The home page, which uh, presents features uh, featured and recommended applications, has been enhanced and an improved layout, more content, and star ratings. Additionally, application add-ons can be installed and removed directly from within software, and many more applications now provide screenshots and descriptions, making it easier to choose the right application for you. I don't think I installed that. No, I didn't. Uh, reworked visual theme. A huge amount of attention to detail has gone into GNOME 314. The uh, visual theme used by applications has been overhauled from the ground up. Uh, with many subtle improvements, uh, message dialogues have been significantly improved. Progress bars have a new, more compact appearance. Spinners have a new design, and menus uh, and switches have also uh, have a new look. Many controls now have new animated uh, transitions. Uh, new look to games, which I never actually use. Streamed line help. Help, the GNOME documentation browser had a major update for 3.14. Even more, now this goes on to talk about how system search has become even more useful with the addition of search providers from calculator and clocks. Uh, let's see here. GNOME's done some stuff with their geolocation. Uh, one thing here, uh, oh, and you know what? Music has gained a new powerful search feature, which allows you to search either your local music collection online or sources such as uh, Magnitude or Gemendo. So as far as music is concerned, when we open up music, 
I have, and actually let me show you that first. It seems as though music automatically is going to look for the music uh, directory uh, within your home folder. Now for me, I don't keep my music stored here on this particular hard drive where the OS is installed. I have a Crucial M4 SSD that I have only about 100 and I think it's 130 gigs or no, 160 gigs. So I don't keep all my music on uh, this particular hard drive because I've got 75 gigs of music. I keep that on a one terabyte Seagate uh, Barracuda drive, um, but I symbolically link all of my music, my music directory on that drive to my music directory here. So when I open up music, it automatically picks up that symbolic, uh, symbolically linked directory. However, um, what doesn't work very well <laughs> is uh, my library being so large, it just really bogs, um, bogs down this application. And as far as I can see, I can create a new playlist, but I can't tell the application where to point uh, as far as where my music's located. So, you know, if it's not located in this music directory and I decide to keep it somewhere different, um, I haven't found, now I haven't played around with it <clears throat> for too long, but if I can't find it very simple within a few seconds, then the average user is not going to be able to figure it out either. And so I think some work can be done as far as the music application. Definitely. I love the way it looks aesthetically. Again, I think it's, it looks really nice. It doesn't have a ton of features. I'm a Banshee fan personally. I love the integration for podcasts. Uh, and I think Banshee is able to handle large music libraries very well. Um, so I've used Banshee for a very long time and still my music player of choice. I think music looks great. Uh, it needs a couple more features and uh, I'm not thrilled on the lack of preferences, like being able to point uh, music to specific directories outside of the default music directory in your home folder. Um, but I think it looks great, <laughs> but it's I'm not gonna use it. I'm gonna use Banshee. Uh, so that's pretty much it, guys. Um, online accounts as well. Um, let's see. One thing I don't really like is that online accounts does not include Twitter. Twitter was removed. It's such a commonly used application. I would think that they would want to include Twitter in an online account, but it got removed. And I didn't do a lot of reading on it as to why. But uh, I think that that was kind of a poor decision to remove Twitter. Now, maybe there's a legitimate reason why it's not included, but um, yeah, I would have really liked to see Twitter included in your online accounts. You know, I don't use Twitter heavily, but you know, it is something that I'm, I'm active, semi-active on these days. So it'd be really nice to see Twitter uh, involved here. But all in all, again, as I, as I mentioned before, I'm falling in love again with GNOME. Um, you know, the interface itself is my favorite desktop environment to date. Uh, I think that uh, the expandability with extensions is great. I would like, however, um, a little bit more dependability. Now, I know that really relies upon extensions, but every time GNOME Shell, not every time, but a lot of times when GNOME Shell is uh, updated, it'll break your whole, ex extensions will end up breaking your whole desktop. So thankfully though, from GNOME 3.12 to 3.14, when I upgraded, um, None of the extensions that I used actually broke the desktop. So, you know, for me, that was a big plus. Um, and I can't wait to get that uh, Matt, uh, Apple trackpad because being able to, you know, control a lot of multi-gesture um, tasks from within GNOME Shell using that trackpad is going to be wild. I can't wait. I'm actually really, really excited for that. Um, so I'm going to be looking for one of those trackpads uh, to add to my GNOME Shell desktop. But... You know, once again, I really enjoy it. I think uh, Boxes looks extremely promising. I've never really given it a fair try. I'm going to be trying Boxes because there's some really exciting things and awesome features that I think Boxes comes with in uh, the update for 3.14. So uh, look for a video review of Boxes. And um, that's my overview of GNOME 3.14. I think, again, I'll take all of that under the hood work any day over a bunch of known, you know, a bunch of nonsense features that I'll probably not use. Stability, reliability, um, and you know, overall speed and user experience improvements. I'm all for those. You don't have to wow me with a million new features. Uh, just make it stable and make it functional, and I'm a happy guy. So that's my overview of GNOME 3.14.
hopefully that gave you guys a little bit of an insight as to what to expect. And until next time, we'll talk to you guys later.